okay. It's COE with Juan Araya. Once again, Juan, thanks so much, as always, for doing these. Hi, Seth. How are you? I'm doing great. All right. So I'm doing pretty good. Uh, you and I are supposed to be talking about uh, structuring for scale. And yeah. so we got, uh, you know, an opportunity here to talk about the disruptor and the disruptee. So your mm -hmm. old shop, you were the disruptor. And so we can talk about structuring for scale from people, process, and technology standpoint there. Yep. And then we can talk about structuring for scale at the disruptee. You are disrupting yourself these days. Yeah. People, process, technology. So first things first, uh, mm -hmm. put, your, put your old hat on at the old mm -hmm. shop. Structuring for scale. Uh, take people, process, technology, whichever one you'd like first. Uh, how was it? What was the approach as far as structuring for scale? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll go into those three, but be before I get there, I think that once you start thinking about scale, um, the, the other thing that you need to think about is speed. And I, I think that's a critical component to scaling. And, and probably a, a, a factor that makes a significant um, difference in terms of how you approach it and what's your strategy behind it. And of course, you, you you need to understand like what's the end goal, where is it that you want to be, and and of course why you want to be there. Like what's the business need behind it, so that you can figure out what is it the scale, what is it the scale that you need to build, and what are the things that you need to to build from the get go. But speed to me is it's very important because then it de determines how you do stuff. Um, so in the case of Uber. Um, speed was paramount. Um, so as everybody knows, it, it's a fast growing business and uh, we were supporting that, that growth. And um, it's a, it was double digits every quarter and it was just crazy. So speed by itself was uh, almost a goal for us to try to catch up with, with the business. Um, so what, what does that mean in terms of um, those people process technology components. Um, in the case of Uber, technology was critical. Um, and technology probably went first. And this is something that I would say that applies to everybody. If speed, if speed is critical, then probably you wanna make sure that your technology is adequate for that type of growth. Um, and of course, Uber had it somehow easy um, because it's a technology company and culturally it was ready for kind of thing. Um, and then you have all the adequate tools or it was easy to build on them. And um, because you're scaling also, you're starting with very small teams and very small systems that you could also build upon. Um, but it, it was somehow easy. I think that on the contrary, if you are in a much more stable organization, and you try to um, leverage technology too fast, it's, it's not going to be that easy. Um, and you might not even have that capability. So again, technology, I, I would start there if speed is, is a factor. And in general, ideally, I would always try to start there, especially in our business, in our industry, uh, where now technology enables a number of solutions, automation, is clearly part of that future end state. And when you think about scaling, it's not scaling your physical operation necessarily or having more people in your center. It's doing more, of course, right? So technology um, in my mind is, is, is what go first. Now, um, after that, in the case of Uber, um, people was the next element, right? And of course, the basic stuff, hiring fast enough and making sure that you had the right people was essential. But then you have to build a structure around it and you have to build an organization that can scale. And um, of course, you want to start with your managers and make sure that you have um, a, a good organizational structure by itself, but that they are aligned to what the growth will be out in the future. Um, so of course, people, you need them. Uh, and finally comes processes, which is usually, or, or at least in my experience, much lower. Um, 
probably not as painful as technology, but still slow and not easily understood um, and even difficult to implement if you don't have the right culture on site. Uh, because I think you also need to have like the right mindset to do it. You need to have um, your teams used to working with processes and uh, understanding and thinking in those terms. Uh, and again, if you don't have that, then building on that mindset is going to be very time consuming and painful in, in general. But then, so coming, coming back to, to the overall picture for Uber, technology came first. Second came the people, and then third, um, the, the processes. And by, by the time that I left, probably we were just getting started with the process component, which is more long-term. You sustain that over time. And then um, it, it, it's the foundation for future improvements and for future automation. So that's how, that's how it was for, for Uber. And so, you know, my, my external perspective on Uber is uh, we were just painting as fast as we could. And, uh, you know, we wound up with this Picasso, which kind yeah. of sort of made sense. And now we needed to restructure the face of that was in the paint that was featured in the painting. Uh, so that's yes. a little bit more sense to where we were going. Right. How did that, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, compare and feel free uh, to, uh, to, to, to continue my art uh, analogy uh, to, to, to the new shop. <laughs> yeah, so the, the, the new shop, it's, it's, a very, um, it's a very different scenario because it's, it's an established organization. So Stryker has a long history as a um, med tech company. But uh, in terms of uh, shared services, we're somehow just getting started and um, so you have that duality of an environment which is stable and it's mature and it's a it's a business that um, that just like any other public company it's subject to a number of regulations and uh, a number of controls that you need to be compliant with um, which by the way was not the case early on with uber until recent with the recent ipo it's, it's a different thing but but so you, you have this very stable environment and you have an organization that you're just building from scratch and you, you're trying to scale. Um, so in a way, speed is, is not um, a, a significant pressure point. Um, it's, it's more self-inflicted, to put it in some terms, but speed is, is not the driving component here. It's more that and goal where you want to have a stable good operation that operates within certain quality standards um, so having said that um, in our case technology might not necessarily come first and this is where you go first to okay so let's start with processes and that's where you want to uh, get going because you're maybe you're centralizing like we're doing a little bit of that um, if somebody is starting their shared services journey they're there, there might have less than optimal processes somewhere. And again, if they're centralizing, you need to bring them to some sort of standard. Um, so you need to start there. So there's a lot of process work going on. Uh, of course, documentation, just basic stuff, but standardizing as much as you can from a process point of view um, enables you to first take that Picasso and try to convert it into a Matisse, you know, it's still not, it's still not a Renaissance type of painting yet, but um, uh, it, it, it helps you go into that direction. And, and then you can come bring in the technology component, which for an established organization such as this, it's, it's more complex, it's more difficult. You've been already working with ERPs for a long period of time. And, and then you need to work your way, way around that you just cannot build from scratch a new erp or whatever it takes time and effort so again scaling then becomes a game of standardizing your processes making sure that you have that if you have that you could potentially plug in the technology um, later on but it but it might not be the priority at the moment or it might not be where you add the most value initially um, and of course people um, you, you always need that, um, but it, but it, it kind of goes like a given, at least in, in my mind, it's not the, the driving factor.
Yeah, the given is at an established organization, you do have at least a nice good base of the right people. And then you kind of tweak from there mm -hmm. um, right. while focusing, uh, you know, excruciatingly so uh, on the yes. processes. What, what, what I find fascinating, and some of this might have to do with just uh, who you are as a person, is when I have these conversations, usually there's a little bit of a frenetic kind of energy on the other side you know we got to get the technology we got to do the intelligent automation we got to do it right now because if not you know the the competition's going to outpace us and for what about the disruptors and what you're saying is if you've got a good basis if you yeah. do have pretty solid processes that do need to be you know uh improved if you've got a team that is pretty solid that does need to be kind of tweaked to, to add new you know, uh, components to the uh, enterprise, then you can add this technology in a way that kind of makes sense. And you don't have to be running around with your hair on fire. Yes. Well, that's why I don't have any hair, by the way. <laughs> that, that, that already happened. Uh, but no, you, you're, you're right. I think that um, I, I, I wouldn't recommend jumping into um, automation as quickly as many might want to. It, I think it's very appealing, but I think you, you must acknowledge how how quickly can you do it and how much resources you can put into that. Mm. Because it, it can be it, it can exhaust your resources significantly. And if you still haven't figured out at least um, a, a good baseline of your processes by themselves, it, it, it can be costly. Um, and it can be slow as well, and then you can create other problems. Like, I can't remember whom I was talking a few weeks, a couple of weeks ago, um, and, and we were talking about how automating certain processes actually create, and you might successfully do it, but might actually create bottlenecks further down the road or create other types of problems, even controls. Might, you, you might still be missing some controls. So. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't jump too quickly into the automation. Um, again, if you are running an operation that's already there and, and maybe there, there's already some complexity uh, out there, if you're really starting from scratch or the operation is small enough, then maybe, maybe you can go faster um, at it and then you can leverage it, which again, it's ideal. Like best case scenario for me is you are just starting from scratch. And then of course you can build the technology from the technology up, um, but it's not necessarily the case for everybody. And if it's not the case where you are, being purposely deliberate with your automation actually might save you time in the long run. Exactly, that's, that's the way I see it. And, and, and that's maybe my bet for the future, which is, I'm taking some steps that might not seem that are the fastest right now, but I believe that that will make it um, our journey into automation faster and, and easier because then we were a little bit better organized for that to happen. Um, and then we might end up with that, with a, a very, a very nice painting, um, but, but, but not, not the initial Picasso. So um, yeah, so that's, that's how I'm seeing things right now. Yeah, and, and and finally on on the painting, you bring up Matisse, and you know we'll throw in Monet and his you know all their impressionist friends. My my sense is uh, that these guys obviously great painters, uh, but all of them seem to have you know uh, uh, problems with their sight. I think that was <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know yeah. yes, yeah. Well, you know it's it's very, that that's that's an interesting um, topic because every. Every uh, organization and whomever is leading these organizations has a different view of what they want to paint as well, you know? Um, so it, it, I, there's never a one size fits all in why you need to figure what's, what's the purpose of what you're doing and have a good strategy around it, um, yeah. Yeah, but that is, I mean, if you're gonna ask only one question, it's, what do we want this painting to look like when we're done? You know, exactly. Let everybody put down your brushes for a second. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, absolutely. And again, it's scale, but scale for what, right? And why, how is this supporting the, the business? 
uh, and in what way do we want to scale? And what kind of company are we? Are we okay with a huge organization? Do we want to stay very slim? Like, what's the strategy around it? What's the strategy around your finance blueprint and your costs and all that? So asking those questions first will allow you to drive a better uh, strategy and tactics around it. There we go. And we end where you started, which was you got to know where your strategy is and where your vision is going. Uh, exactly. Before you even talk about something like speed or scale. Exactly. Juan, these are always enlightening. Uh, very much appreciate your time. Can't wait for the next one. Absolutely. No, it's always great talking to you.